thank you all for coming back so promptly. I hope you enjoyed your parallel sessions. Uh, mine was fantastic, I'm delighted to say. Um, so at all our conferences, as you know, this is our 10th biennial conference. We have a slot on the last day just for something a little different and a little bit special, not that everything we haven't, have done hasn't been special. But this year, we're honored to welcome Tolu Mackay as our special guest. Tolu is an independent artist, singer, and songwriter. She was born in Nigeria and raised in the Midlands of Ireland. And she's become one of Ireland's leading creative voices. She released her first EP, Being, in 2020. And during lockdown, her rendition of the classic Saw Doctors song, N17, accompanied by the RTE con Concert Orchestra, lifted the spirits of the nation and made her the highest ever charting female solo artist in Ireland. <laughs> uh, Tolu is well known from her TV appearances, which include other voices, The Late Late Show and The Tommy Tiernan Show. And recently she completed a sold out tour of Ireland, including a headline performance at Vicker Street. Tola was recognised as the Irish Tatler Woman of the year, year for Music and Best Female Artist at Black and Irish. Most importantly, we like to claim she's a graduate of NUI Galway, so <laughs> <laughs> everything else pales into its insignificance. So please put your hands together for Tola McKay. Hello, hello everyone. I am not going to pretend that I am formal. I'm very, this is going to be informal. So I want you to like engage with me. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, thank you so much for, you know, reading all that out. I never, ever say that to myself, like ever. I just, I'm like, please let someone else do that. But I've been sitting in and I am so grateful and honored to be here back in NUIG. Oh, sorry, NUI Galway. And, um, like, I was studying psychology and philosophy, um, Bachelor of Arts, when I left. And then I got into postgrad in Trinity, and I wanted to be a neuropsychologist. And then things became a bit too expensive, so I decided to do music. <laughs> but anyways, it's fine. My parents were not that disappointed. <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> but um, I've been listening to the different, um, what's it called, speeches that's been happening, and it's incredible what's happening. Like, I think it's Freud Freugrads. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, um, just in relation to like youth work and how important and integral it is for even myself, because that's what's helped me to be where I am today. And I was listening to um, you guys that were doing the youth work as well. Like, you're amazing. Like, what you're doing is outstanding. And um, it really made me realize that if I didn't have that kind of help or support when I was growing up, um, music wouldn't have, I wouldn't have found music, I wouldn't have found my passion at all. So let me give you back the backstory. I moved here to Ireland when I was five years old. My parents brought me from Nigeria and the first place that I could feel somewhat settled or could call home was Tullamore in County Offaly, very rural. I remember 2000, there was a little kid that saw me and was like, Mommy, look, there's black people. Why is your skin like that? Which <laughs> <laughs> was fine. I was like, yeah, I get it. I think I'm trying to look for people that look like me, too. I can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it was really, um, it was really hard because it was just me, my mom, and um, like two of my other siblings. So my mom was working like a lot. And I had to grow up very fast. And finding some form of like space for like settling was very hard. I would move around like every like in secondary school, no, primary school. Every year, I would go to different primary schools. So having like friendship or some form of stability was never there. I think it was in my adult years that I had to start finding coping mechanisms or finding better ways of unlearning habits that I've learned just because of coping or trying to cope anyways in a place that I didn't feel somewhat comfortable. So um, in my second year, I actually went to two secondary schools as well, so <laughs> that was crazy. But in my second year, that's when I like, found friends and really found a sense of community. And it was the first time that I started engaging in music. 
Um, there was a lot of things that happened beforehand that never really allowed me to explore music because I was shy. Um, I, like I said, the only black kid in like my primary school, secondary school, until my brother came in. And um, it, was, it was tough because identity, I feel like I'm still going through like identity crisis. And I've always tried to like find more people that look like me, not because it's a bad thing, but because um, I think you're always trying to find people that look like you just because you don't want to feel like an alien. Um, but I will say that um, with like my, with Tullamore College, we never had music. It was my arts teacher that um, made me really start understanding that art can be a way of like releasing and expressing yourself. And they really like tried because we did, we were very poor in Tullamore, um, even our school. They couldn't afford getting a, um, a teacher to come and teach us. So we would have to sacrifice our lunch and our breaks if we wanted to do music or be in a choir. And that was, um, that I, I did it because I loved it. And um, I started doing competitions and from getting that community support, um, I remember the last competitions I did, Midlands Got Talent. That was also the first time I realized that I could actually like pay for things. Because um, Midlands Got Talent, the prize money was 3,000 and I didn't know how I was gonna get into NUI Galway and like sort myself out, shout out to Susie. Um, <laughs> but like even that commendation, <laughs> Um, accommodation was really tough and with like winning that money it really helped me to like find my feet a little bit because like I said we couldn't afford anything unless Susie was helping um, but even like within the community in Sulamor um, we have a area called St. Mary's Youth Center I remember um, if like mom was away or the kids needed to be somewhere and in, in a safe environment um, this youth center was a place where you'd learn about theater, about painting, about drawing, about making like clay pots, singing, whatever it is that you wanted to do. It was never, um, I think it was the first time that I felt like I had a community, if that made sense, that was outside of church. Now, church. <sighs> Let's talk about the church. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I grew up as, um, a, as a Christian, Pentecostal Christian, and um, I've always found that, especially within like the black community, that we often, um, like, not, not that it's a bad thing, but it's always the, the safest place that we see most of ourselves. And because it's a community in of itself, also combined with like religion, it's hard to kind of separate um, the religion with how you want to see, like, function and have friends that look like you. So I'd often go to these like um, functions and start singing and that's where I like started enjoying the art of performance. But it was very intertwined in like, I don't necessarily know if I understand this religion, but I know this is how it makes me feel. But because this is how it makes me feel, I'll continue doing this. And I often find that a lot of, um, especially like migrant kids, we don't like to explore or go out as much, not because, um, not because we don't want to, but sometimes because we don't necessarily have like access to like these other places. Um, and because Tillamore is quite small, that's why I was able to kind of get myself into like St. Mary's Youth Center and stuff like that, because my teachers saw that I had interest in music, so they would like pitch me to like these places. But oftentimes that's never the case for like people that do look like me. Um, getting access to information, even though like it may seem like it's readily accessible or it's everywhere, um, if I'm saying that I'm coming from a community whereby religion and having to be in such a space is where I will feel my best, um, it's, and if I'm going to a different type of like um, gathering that doesn't have people that look like me, I'll be too scared to go to that, those kind of functions. But because I grew up in a rural place, I'm very used to being the only black child, so I always throw myself in those spaces. But with speaking to like friends and family and kind of like seeing the black community build itself more into Lemoore, it was never, I think a lot of people felt like we were segregating ourselves when it was never the case. We needed someone to say, this is also for you. We needed someone to say, you know, you are also allowed into this space. And I, there was never like a sense of like communication, like, you know, being spread or given to the youths into the more. So whenever, like, I remember one time I was, um, 
it was just me and my group of friends coming from church, and it looked really cool walking down the streets of Tullamore. And there was like, I think 10 of us, and we're all black, and like seeing that in Tullamore was like a bit shocking. And I remember um, it was the first time I kind of like encountered like racism in that level. It was just like everyone staring at us, and then some got vocal enough to be, you know, saying things. But it made me realize that it's just they like they just haven't seen um, us in that kind of way. There haven't there hasn't been enough of us. But there's always like a negative connotation in seeing like groups of people that look different from you. And I don't know why that is. I think it's probably like a human thing. I don't know. I don't know why we're wired weird. <laughs> and I think that's also the reason why I got into psychology, um, because I really wanted to understand like why we think the way we do. I really wanted to understand myself because I've always felt so different. And because I lived in Tullamore and I wasn't around like black people often unless it was like because of religion or Christianity, I had a huge trouble with my identity. And um, if it wasn't for the church, I'd, I don't know where I'd be honestly, if I'm truthfully because that's where I got to really express myself in a way that I never really got the chance to. And also, um, it gave me a sense of like community. And it was also a way of me exploring my um, spirituality. But it was when I left the church that I really got to see that I could also bring the sense of who I am outside to different types of like communities. It doesn't always have to be in the church. But um, I think that's what a lot of people like me struggle with because this is home, this is a safe space, but they may not necessarily like want to like do the religion, but because this is a, famili a familiar space for them, they'll prefer to sacrifice themselves to just be in that space. And it can be quite lonely because you want to do different things and you want to challenge yourself differently, but you also feel like that's not meant for you because you've never had other groups come to you and say that this is also for you too. <sighs> Anyways, now, moving on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when I won the competition in, um, in Tullamore, my mom brought like all my friends, we, she, she did the most. She put my flyers all across the schools when I walked in. She didn't tell me, it was a surprise. I don't know if she thought it would be a good thing because kids, 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 kids can be great bullies. <laughs> so, but anyways, they all came, we got a bus, I won the competition, was able to pay off um, you know, rent for like two, two, three months, which was great, and um, started working. And then when I left and went into Trinity and saw how hard that was because of money, um, music was always like a constant thing I had that would just keep me going. And um, before COVID, um, I was, I would honestly say that I was sleeping maybe four hours um, each day for like three years because um, who knew, like I learned very quickly that no one's gonna save me. I have to be my, like my own savior because um, I mean, money wise, my, I can't ask my parents. I have to provide the money myself. Secondly, um, what's it called? I have to get a job, so I need to find a nine to five. And then third, I love music. That's my passion, that's what keeps me going. So from like, what, seven till about, I don't know, one o'clock, that's just like the cycle of my life constantly until I crashed in, at the end of 2019. And then that's when I made the active decision to be a full-time musician but I didn't know COVID was gonna happen. <laughs> I didn't know COVID was gonna happen. But towards the end of um, 2020, cause I'm very stubborn. When I say I'm gonna do something, I, I need to see it through. So the end of 2020, um, December 31st, that's when the whole N17 broke out. But I was this close to like giving up and just going back to um, my full-time job. But the thing is, um, I, I wouldn't say I'm an overachiever. I just like to work hard. And I think that's just because of my background and knowing that no one can save me apart from myself just because of what the hands I've been led, you know, given. So I got into Google and Google is like, oh my God, everybody wants to work in Google. Yes, free food, flights, yeah, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I was in it and as soon as I realized I was not happy, I, I knew that I, I was, I was going to be like sad for the rest of my life. So I needed to do something else. 
Because, I mean, you're getting free food. What else do you need? <laughs> I felt like a crazy person. But I have um, friends that are incredibly gifted. And that same year when I was trying to figure out, like, why I'm so sad in, in, in a job that everybody wants, um, it made me realize that it, it brought me back to my childhood. Because one of my friends um, had a theater play, and I was acting in it. I broke my leg. And I broke my leg on the week. Like, I sprained my, my ankle. But I didn't mind. I was hopping on stage and doing my lines. And I always figured that whenever it comes to like, my passion, I never, ever, like, ever, like, reduce. I, like, I never, like, um, how can I explain it? I never, like, give up. I keep going, even if, like, my ankle is broken or my knee is, like, sore. Even some shows that I was on TV, I've broken my my MCL, I actually tore my MCL um, recently this year, but I've learned that when it comes to like, my passion and with music, I will keep going no matter what. Even if it's like my last breath, I will keep doing it. But um, in relation to all of this and me speaking about my life and where I am, um, yeah, if I didn't have like youth workers that were in that area that really wanted to help you know, me or just give me a chance, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have had the huge leap of faith to just quit my job and go into music full time. But because I had all those experiences from my childhood and also believing in myself so much because I've, I've had to, and it made me realize that, um, yeah, that's been an integral part for who I am today. And I'm really excited about um, what Freuga, Freuga, yeah. I'm really excited about what Freuga is doing. I did learn Irish in secondary school. I fought for it. It's just I can't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yes, that's like my life story. And um, at the moment, I I'm, I'm a huge advocate for mental health. Um, I've worked with the likes of Minding Creative Minds. Um, they are um, kind of like a helpline for artists um, globally in, well, in Ireland that need any kind of like help or support. Um, I've worked with Piesa with um, Darkness Into Light recently. Um, I've helped with Women's Aid as well. And my hope and plan um, for Tullamore is to maybe set up the competition that I was in um, which was um, Midlands Got Talent. So I want to see if there's a way I can bring that up again. But even small things like St. Patrick's Day, I want to find a way to get my community more involved in that. Because growing up, those were exciting things that I was also included in. Um, but one thing I will say is that, um, you know, with the works that I've done and trying to like bring more black voices into spaces like this, um, by bringing us, it's not, you're not doing anything bad, it's, being, it's you being inclusive. And I think that's something a lot of people need to understand. It's not, you're not doing a bad thing or you're not like segregating us or you're not like pointing things out. It's just, it's a form of inclusion. And um, there's so many, so many, like I could keep talking about like the different dichotomy and aspects of like religion and different type of community and like how people from Nigeria and different countries in Africa, some get along, some don't, and like all of that being mixed into like a pot and then you're coming into Ireland and then you're also trying to navigate who you are. It's very confusing, it's a lot. And I think um, there just isn't enough com like communication to understand um, the different type of aspects that happens within these small communities. Because as, as, even though they stay together, it's because that's a form of comfort and safety for them, not necessarily because they don't want to be part of the community. And all it takes is just giving encouragement, because that's what kind of led me into art, being encouraged. My art teacher didn't have to show me my first um, music that I'd love forever. Like, those are just small things that really makes you become who you are. How am I doing with time? A few more minutes, yeah. Sweet, great, awesome. Thank you, I prepared this very well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Um, like, it's, it's been a journey. And to be back here in NUI Galway and to be speaking to you and in support of like something I'm quite passionate about, which is mental health, kids, and just making sure everyone's like good, you know? 
and supported, um, I'm super grateful. And normally when I finish a gig or when I finish performance, I'll be like, my name is Tolu McKay, don't forget me, meet me at the bar. But there's none, there's none of that. <laughs> no, there's none of that. So thank you so much. <laughs>